On this project here, the tieback system had failed. The tieback rods had rusted off, the wall had started to lean out, just wasn't effective as a seawall anymore. So we're going to dig this wall out, get all the pilings out, all the lumber out, get it banded up, put on a trailer, haul it over to a reclaimed center for resale. This prevents all this material from being piled up in landfills and just going to waste and taking up space. If you look really closely, about two foot behind the existing retainer wall, there's an old wood retainer wall that was installed. So apparently that wall had failed many years ago and they went ahead and installed another wood wall right in front of it. The Tyvek system on that wall looks like it was a two by six that went back to a piling. This is an old way of tying back instead of uh, using tieback stainless steel rods. We had to remove this tree. It was right in the way of the uh, wall. And you can see the tieback piling that they had installed right through the roots of this tree. I'm sure that was pretty difficult to get installed. Now that we got the wall removed and all the lumber banded up and hauled off, we got us a clean slate. We're ready to start installing the uh, new vinyl seawall. What we're going to do is go ahead and set us a couple pilings on each end, get us a grade elevation set, and then uh, start putting the vinyl sheets in the ground. You can see here we've got our temporary pilings installed, got our whaler secured to it. We've got a lower temporary whaler that supports the bottom of the sheets to help to keep all the sheets in line as we're installing them. We've got a uh, 16 foot return wall going in here. We like to install a return wall on both sides of the seawall because you just never know what's going to happen with the neighbor's wall. If the wall rots out and fails and we've got a weak link on the side right there where the wave action can scour around the back side of the wall that we just installed. So we like to pretty much make ourselves a peninsula right there to kind of protect the uh, property. When installing the return wall, we also seal up our wall real good to the neighbor's wall. We don't want to create any leaks in between the two walls. We also leave a connection on the end of our vinyl wall, so if they do decide to go with a vinyl wall, we've got a connection where we can connect right into the corner and keep on going. When driving vinyl sheet pilings with a vibratory hammer, they have a tendency to lean one direction or the other. So every other sheet that connects to the whaler, we like to put a level on and make sure our sheets stay plumb, and then we lag bolt it to the whaler with a 3-8 stainless steel lag bolt. Cowboy Rob, got Cowboy Rob here delivering for us today What's between the timber. What's going on? <laughs> Appreciate you getting out there. Oh yeah. I bet you did. It's always good to have a good working relationship with your lumber yard, getting your material to you on time. Also, keep our trailers loaded or up there. And you can notice the yellow tags on the wood. You know what kind of wood that is. This project calls for 18 foot vinyl sheet pilings. Uh, we get those picked up, get them put in line with the wall. There's a male female interlocking uh, connection there hook those together, then uh, got a 10-foot uh, jet pipe that we run down beside it. The jet pipe is jetting water out. Put that down in the ground, it actually starts boiling the sand up, liquefying the sand, then we take a vibratory hammer and vibrate the sheet down into position as far as we can go. I like to leave a little bit of the sheet up because we're doing a concrete top cap on this project. I like to leave the uh, vinyl inside of the uh, concrete and run some rebar through that to tie it all together.
This is a 20 foot return wall in between the two properties that prevent erosion around in case the neighbor's wall fails. You can see here we've extended one sheet out so if the neighbor does decide to go with the vinyl wall he can connect in right here. I believe I mentioned this earlier in the video but this is a good close up shot of it. You can kind of see what we're doing. Here's our forming area. We got Rich over here building all the forms for our concrete top cap. We got 350 foot of forms to build. This is the uh, 10 to 11 foot jet pipe I was mentioning earlier. We got a four inch pump pushing some water through that thing. It reduces down to an inch and a half. So it's putting out pretty good water pressure, which liquefies that sand and allows the sheet to move rather smoothly down through it with the little help of the vibratory hammer. Sometimes when vibrating the sheet down, the uh, corrugation for whatever reason gets locked up. Not really sure if it's sand or trash getting connected in there. Then we're going to come back with a couple of aluminum plates that we put on either side of the vinyl sheet, run some through bolts through it, then slowly pull up on that thing and vibrate a little bit to get it to break free. So we can uh, get the sheet realigned and reinstalled. Sometimes we got to do a little tree pruning to get the vinyl sheets and they go on top of each other one at a time, 18 foot in the air, so we got to make room to get the sheets to uh, interlock correctly. We're installing six, seven, and eight foot long dead men pilings here that are typically six to seven inch in diameter. Vibrate those poles down the ground 12 foot back behind the seawall to connect a 5 8 by 12 foot long type 316 stainless steel tie back rod as you can see here to the front of the wall with a large square washer and to the back side of the piling with a large square washer. Install a couple uh, two foot drag plates on the pilings. Uh, to prevent the pole from being pulled forward into the ground. This is the lower half of the form board for the concrete top cap that we're forming up. They're supported on top of the six inch pilings. Got to support every foot in there. Then we'll be putting three quarter plywood on top of that. All that plywood has got to be cut back into the corrugation to prevent the concrete from leaking down along the uh, vinyl wall. It's pretty hard to get all that plywood cut perfectly in these corrugations. Uh, what we do is we come back with some expandable foam sprayed in there, wait for it to harden up, then we come back with a razor knife and cut it off even with the plywood to give the uh, concrete a nice smooth edge. We started installing the rebar for the support of our concrete top cap. We've ran four runs of number five rebar the entire length of the seawall. We've also run number four box rebar, a foot to a foot and a half on center, all the way down the wall also. We've drilled one edge of that rebar into our double outside whaler that supports that rebar. Now we have all the form work completed, the rebar installed, now we're spraying the uh, plywood so we get a good release from the uh, concrete when we go to take it off. Get 3,000 PSI concrete installed now. We've also got a vibrator here to try to vibrate all the voids out of it. Got to be real careful with that because if you over vibrate that, you can sometimes make your uh, forms fail. We uh, found we did have one weak spot that we had to address real, real quick and was able to recover. The most important part is really the front side because that's what we're going to see. Yeah, it looks like we'll be doing some concrete smoothing in the dark. Sun's going down on us. Can't get this stuff to dry up quick enough. 
So we got the lights broke out and hopefully get this stuff smoothed out. Working on a nice eased edge on the inside of the concrete right now. This took some time to get finished up. We actually finished up about 9.30 at night, but everything turned out good. We got some of the forms raked off, left a couple form boards on top. Now we're gonna start installing the riprap. We're going to be installing a little over 80 tons of riprap at the toe of this wall. Quarried limestone riprap is great for wall support and also breaks up the force of wave action, preventing scouring from the toe of the seawall. Hey guys, this is a really cool transformation. I think it turned out well from an old wood wall to a vinyl seawall. Nice riprap concrete top cap. Definitely protected this property. Customer will never have to worry about any type of erosion on here. If y'all would subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate that. Hit the like button and the notification bell, then you'll be notified about our next projects. We got a, a maintenance project coming up next. We're working on our barges, working on our trailers, and working on our tractors. Uh, that's stuff that just gotta be done to stay in business and keep everything looking ship shape. Thanks guys.